Welcome to Grape & Wine TV. I'm Kimberly Hunter-Mark and I invite you to join me on this incredible farm-to-table experience in the Niagara Wine Region. Today we're at the Canadian Wine and Culinary Institute at Niagara College, starting at the Benchmark Restaurant. So Jennifer, tell us here at uh, the Canadian Culinary uh, Food and Wine Institute, I know it's a brand new, very long branded name that we're using, uh, exactly what the program is like for the students. Well, there are several programs that actually feed very well into creating a unique experience for visitors here. So because we are now the Canadian Food and Wine Institute at Niagara College, we have basically a living lab here. So the students get to incorporate what they're growing, whether it be herbs, vegetables, grapes um, from the vineyards, and they really get to incorporate it into the visitor's experience. So our programs are hospitality, culinary, wine, and each of those brings something very unique to a visitor here at the college. So Jennifer, tell us about Benchmark and exactly what the food and wine experience is like here for the, uh, for the customer. Sure, absolutely. Well, we decided to call it Benchmark because what we wanted to do here was to really showcase uh, benchmark styles of food, of wine, really have a local unique experience, that farm to table, as we say. So with the Benchmark restaurant, you can come and dine here at Niagara College. We are open for lunch as well as dinner. And the Benchmark restaurant uses our Niagara College wines. We also like to showcase benchmark styles from other wineries. So when you're dining here, uh, you have the opportunity to try our Niagara College teaching winery wines, as well as wines possibly from your favorite Ontario wineries or other wineries in Niagara. Jennifer, this is a very unique academic culinary experience for the students. Who are some of the, the pioneers that lead these students through this journey? We are so lucky to have an outstanding uh, brigade of chefs that lead our students and really mentor them. So. Um, we have with us uh, Chef Mark Picconi. We also have Chef Michael Olson. We uh, n have now, newly, um, Tony DeLuca. So along with that, we've got Peter Blakeman and Chef Kerr, um, a, a handful. I, I, I could go on and on. There's something to be said about every single one of our chefs that mentor the students here, and we're very lucky to have them. Dan LeBlanc is the chef that heads up Benchmark Restaurant currently, along with his sous chef, Sam Seaver. The Canadian Food and Wine Institute here at Niagara College has, uh, has educated some of the great masters in winemaking here in Niagara now. Tell us a little bit about that program. Uh, we have had several students that graduated from this program, from the wine and re winery and viticulture technician program, uh, that are outstanding winemakers today, um, and have certainly been leaving their mark on the wine industry. So. Um, most people are familiar with Paul Pender, who just was awarded Winemaker of the Year at the Ontario Wine Awards, and Taz has won Winery of the Year twice now for Canada. Uh, but we also have many other talented students that are, well, not students any longer, they're grads. So we have uh, Jeff Hundermart, who is at Mary Nissen, heading up the winemaking there, and also has his own virtual winery, 100 Marks. So it's very exciting to see what our students are doing. We have um, Sarah D'Amato, who is a grad of this program, um, working in Toronto as a restaurant sommelier. We also have Lindsay Groves, who is working as um, uh, the first female sommelier in India, in fact, with a hotel chain. And so there isn't a cut and dry career path that students have to take when they come out of this program. They can be winemakers, they can be vineyard managers, they can be a restaurant sommelier deciding where they want to go. And this really is the only program of its kind in Canada, is, is that correct? Yes, there are definitely other wine programs. Our program is the only wine program that is attached to a commercial teaching winery. So the students get the opportunity to harvest the grapes as well as be part of the winemaking in 
the winery here as well. And they also have an opportunity to be part of the retail and the selling and the marketing. So it's exciting that everything is, at one, is in one place here for them. I'm very excited about the, uh, the pairings that we're going to do today. They're a real marriage of farm to table cuisine here at the uh, Benchmark restaurant. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to experience. We decided to start with ice wine. What we're trying to do again to play into the unique experience is um, to have people think outside of the box a little bit. And we know, those of us that drink ice wine regularly, that it doesn't just have to be with dessert. So what we like people to do is to incorporate it with something that is more savory or salty, not always something sweet. So we're starting off with uh, a little bit of a play on a classic match. We tend to think foie gras and sauterne but here our specialty in Niagara is definitely ice wine so we are also doing local foie gras but we are pairing it with our prodigy ice wine. This prodigy ice wine is very unique because it is a blend of three different varietals and each of those adds something to the blend so we have not just Fidel but we have Riesling and we have Chardonnay so the, the Riesling is adding this great acidity that makes it so food friendly and the Videl is adding all of that tropical fruit and the Chardonnay Chardonnay adds this weighty creaminess to it. Very exciting. She makes me want to drink it right now. The nose has layers and layers of aromas that I think you could just spend lots of time. And our winemaker is that. Terence Van Royen, and that's one of the things that he wanted to do with a blended ice wine. So many of them are single varietal, mm -hmm. and he wanted to add that complexity by doing a blended ice wine. So we're playing with that acidity with the foie gras to be palate cleansing. And then we're also looking at creating a bridge of flavors and aromas because there is the peach chutney of, is there anything more local than Niagara peaches? Mm -hmm. So moving on to the, the second course, mm -hmm. we will be um, tasting a, a Niagara College Riesling. Right, so this is our 2010 semi-dry. And Riesling, again, mm -hmm one of the most successful varieties here in Niagara. So with this, uh, we could actually run Riesling, as, as we've done several times, straight through from start to finish in a, in a menu. But what we've done here is that we have charcuterie coming out and they're local, it's local charcuterie, as Dan will explain to us. Um, and the students do sausage making labs and they smoke the meat and they bake the bread and they create the chutneys. So everything that we're seeing is literally produced here on campus as much as possible. So. We've worked with the Riesling because, as we know, charcuterie has a little bit of that fat and salt, and what is so important in that match would be some fresh acidity to, to clean our palate and prepare it for the next taste when we have several things on a plate like that. And onto our red. Yes. So sticking with successful Niagara grape varieties, we've decided to pour the Cabernet Franc. Uh, the students, not this particular Cabernet Franc, obviously, but this vintage Cabernet Franc the students just harvested two weeks ago from our vineyards here and uh, it was a great experience for them. So Cabernet Franc is something that we do well here in Niagara and we do uh, quite a lot of it here at the college. So Cabernet Franc I think is a little bit underappreciated so when people come to the college we really want them to look at varieties that they might not have experienced before. People are comfortable saying Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon um, and pairing that and buying that but we want them to look at other things like Cabernet Franc. So what we like about Cabernet Franc is it's a little bit less tannic than Cabernet Sauvignon and it also has a great backbone of acidity that makes it so food friendly. So we're incorporating this with our root vegetable pasta. So we have um, that great rustic herbal character in the pasta. During our charcuterie plate that we had at lunch, we had the best kielbasa I think I've had in a really long time. And I grew up in a house of Hungarians. And I'll tell you, this stuff is smoked perfection. Right amount of fat. Tell me how you do it. Actually, this is made by our, our culinary, not our culinary students, but to do, uh, Amy Peru, she's a new uh, professor here in the sciences division. Okay, she, it's a new uh, science technology course. She actually produces with the students and smoked it over the weekend for us to use in the restaurant. Now, tell me a little bit about the innovation program. It is brand new to the college. Yep. It's, um, it's, 
uh, basically food science. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it kind of puts them in the, the real life scenario of, of uh, large production also. Like let's say they would be producing this, they would be going into the industry after we're working in like maple leaf or something like that. So they have to fill they had to fill out all the proper paperwork, follow all the proper procedures to, to cover under the health board and stuff like that for this. Now a lot of the product that I've experienced today and our visitors will experience when they come to benchmark is actually homegrown. It truly is farm to table. Um, yep. That includes your pâtés, all of your yep. chutneys, your your condiments. Um, how do you do it? You have uh, gardens, farms, fields. We have local farmers that we that we deal with and stuff like that. Uh, local suppliers that source out local products for us, from from all from from proteins to fruits and vegetables and everything. So it really does meet the Canada Food Guide. Yes, it does. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Dan and I are going to try some of this kibasa and. Uh, then he's going to get back to work. Thank you for joining us here at Grape Wine TV. Thank you very much.